There are always new mutants when it comes to new X books, and with them also come new and important villains and allies. Welcome back, Nerd Squad. I'm your host, Amanda McKnight, and today we are going to get to know some of these new and important characters as we count down the top 10 newest X Men characters you need to know about. Number 10, Louise. Louise is not a major character in terms of being a huge mutant or key villain to mutants in the current series, but she is someone who will likely end up becoming a close friend and ally of Wolverine. She first appeared in issue number one of the newest Wolverine series that started in 2020. I actually remember reading that first issue when I was in New York City right before the world went crazy. Oh my, what a time. Oh, memories. Louise is a member of the Night Guard, and while she dropped off after issue one, as we keep coming back to Dracula and the Vampire Nation's going ons in the Wolverine series, she too has resurfaced. Louise was given a suit by Forge to help slow her transformation into a vampire after she and her Night Guard were attacked and either killed or turned. She once more teamed up with Logan as they went head to head with Dracula and his loyal subjects, and likely she'll be back again as this slow burning story continues to be developed. In fact, I think this is going to be like the big story before the end of this current Wolverine series. Whenever we get there. Number 9, Cyclops Lass. So, Cyclops Lass might not be one of the most important characters on this list, but I still think she is a character you should get to know because, well, she's just a cool character. I really like Cyclops Lass. Cyclops Lass is Beatrice, Buddy, Bartholomew, and is the leader of the Children of the Atom. By the way, it took me a minute to realize when I first heard of this fan composed mutant inspired teen hero team's name that their group name was another phrase used for mutants and even the X-Men back in the day. It's pretty cool when you realize that. Neat stuff. Cyclops Lass appears to have powers similar to the X-Men member and often leader, Cyclops, but in reality we learned that it was actually alien tech which gave her team their powers, allowing them to appear like mutants and like some of their favorite X-Men members. Still, Buddy is a cool character and while Children of the Atom has ended, I do hope we get to see more of its team members. Buddy made her first cameo appearance in Marvel's Voices issue number one and her full appearance in Children of the Atom issue number one. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list, if you want more mutant lists, please, please let us know by hitting that like button. It really does help us out at the channel and it lets us know that you want more X lists, which honestly I like giving you all the X Men things. So yes, let's do it. Number 8, Cosmar. Cosmar is one of the new new mutants, if that makes sense. She first appeared in issue number 9 of the newest series from 2020. Currently there are two different groups of new mutants in that series, the one based on the mutant island nation of Krakoa, who are truly feeling those outcast vibes right now, and currently are like the Shadow King's law lost mutant kids, and the other traditional new mutant team who is more focused on space adventures and other international exploits. When Cosmar's powers first manifested, it resulted in the death of her parents. Her powers cause her to suck people into her nightmares, as she creates a reality warping sphere surrounding her. All those who touch or interact with it run the risk of being sucked in. And I believe Forge actually made her a suit as well, as Forge is just making everybody little things to help them with their powers to help her sort of control those powers so that they wouldn't uh, be so disastrous. Number 7, Gimmick. Gimmick is a new mutant who first appeared and had her powers manifest in Children of the Atom. She was the one member of the team who actually ended up making it to Krakoa due to the fact that she was a real mutant, in addition to also being a major fangirl of the X-Men. But aside from her being a mutant, Carmen Cruz is also good friends with the fellow Children of the Atom, with Cyclops Lass, aka Buddy, probably being her best friend on the team and also her secret crush who she's in love with. Another thing that I love about Carmen is that she also is the person that makes all the costumes on the team, and she's super into cosplay, which I just think is like super cool and super cute. We don't have a lot of characters in the comics that are cosplayers, so... I really liked that element. Gimmick's powers appeared initially to be similar to Gambit's, but this was all done using alien technology. In reality, when Carmen's mutant powers manifested, it was revealed that they were shape-shifting in nature and also granted her a healing factor. Carmen made her first cameo appearance in 2020 in Marvel's Voices Issue 1, but would appear fully in the first issue of Children of the Atom the following year in 2021. Also when she did have her Gambit powers, it was pretty cool because she was like throwing uh, basically little like clothing pins, if that makes sense. 
at people, which I love. Number six, Maxime and Manon. Maxime and Manon are relatively new characters and mutants who appeared within the last year, but we also now potentially have a different version of them in the current X books. They're likely from a different continuity due to what we learned during the dawn of X period of the current line. There's like a version of them I think that's like 616 and then there's a version of them that doesn't actually have a reality number officially yet, but yes. Maxime and Manon, as we see them in the current timeline, are a brother and sister who together can heavily manipulate and warp the minds of others. Maxime can manipulate the emotions of his target and Manon can manipulate and alter their memories, making the two a powerful duo when working in tandem. Maxime and Manon once served Ahab, being brainwashed into using their powers to make hounds for him. However, they would later be freed by Jean Grey and Cable would convince her to look after them. Maxime and Manon are currently relevant because in the New Mutant series, they use their powers to make two humans attack one another and fight to the death, which is against Krakoan law. Ooh. However, nothing seems to have come from them taking this extreme action just yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if it comes around at some point. Number 5, Bay the Blood Moon. Bay the Blood Moon is an awesome new character who made her first appearance in the Ten of Swords event back in the second main book from the event Ten of Swords Stasis. She was one of the Arako mutants who was called to compete in the Otherworld tournament, fighting to represent her nation. However, her fight actually ended up being a marriage. Basically, the Otherworld tournament was gloriously weird because it was being led by Saturnine. So we had traditional sword fights combined with lots of different kinds of battles, including puzzle solving duels, food eating competitions, dance offs, and even an arranged marriage. However, it also all worked out as Cypher and Bay were seemingly both enamored with the other as they were both masters of language and communication, but who struggled to understand one another, which fascinated them both, especially Cypher. They were both married and were each awarded a point as it was considered a shared victory for both sides. Also the art in the issue of Excalibur where they get married is just so good. It's so great. I love it. Number 4, Chen Zhao. Chen is not a mutant, nor is she an ally to mutant kind. She is just the opposite, their enemy. After coming up against the Marauders, trying to inspire mutant hate in her people as a public figurehead, billionaire, and anti-mutant activist, she ended up allying herself with Hominis Verendi. Still hell bent on destroying mutant kind's reputation as heroes, and now especially focused on doing harm to the band of mutant heroes that we know as the Marauders. Chen Zhao made her first appearance back in 2019 in Marauders issue 1, which once again, if you haven't read any of this comic, why not go back and start with that first issue in Chen's first appearance. Currently Chen is Hominis Verandai's white bishop, and she's definitely a villain that I think is going to be more prominent and keep getting like more badass, which I love. Number 3, Dolores Ramirez. Dolores Ramirez is another non-mutant, but someone who is a very important character within and around the X-Men universe currently. She is the head of the X-Desk, and no, I don't mean that she worked with Jonathan Hickman to bring our current line of X-Books to life. Within Earth 616, she is the one who presides over the United States government X desk, which monitors, keeps tabs on, and ultimately kind of spies on the mutant nation of Krakoa and its major players and political stratagems. The X desk is a department within the CIA. Dolores once offered to help fellow CIA agent Jeff Bannister, ally of Wolverine, who had been working with him, but he turned her down. Dolores was also one of the lucky few to get an invite to the Hellfire Gala and met with Storm in secret during her first appearance in Marauders issue 11, where she was rewarded for leaking some important information about poisoned medicine to the mutants. So while she's watching them, she also kind of seems pretty friendly. Number 2, Arako. Arako is both an island and a mutant just like Krakoa. In fact, there was a time when both Krakoa and Arako were joined together, but years ago they were separated. Arako made their first appearance in Powers of X issue number 4, and later on we learn of all that went on there with the island, including the mutants who inhabited it and their connection to a vastly important important mutant, Apocalypse. Following the Ten of Swords event, Arako attempted to reunite with Krakoa, but both islands decided nah, they were no longer really interested in one another, and the time had basically changed them. They reluctantly rejoined until a more suitable option was found for Arako and the mutants of Krakoa. In planet size X-Men, some of the mutants banded together under the direction of Magneto to terraform Mars and move Arako and its inhabitants, the mutants of Arako, to the now alive 
life planet. So that's what happens when you terraform a planet, you bring it to life again. I actually didn't know that Mars was considered a dead planet until I read Planet Size X Men, and I was like, wow, I feel like I'm also learning some science facts, which is great. Number one, Genesis. One of the most badass of all the new characters we've gotten recently in the world of X Men. Genesis is the long lost wife of Apocalypse, who also was one of the main leaders of Arako. She ended up fighting against Annihilation and becoming its new host in order to save her people, uniting both the Amenthi and the mutants of Arako. Donning the mask, she became a leader of the Amenthi Demon Army, but also lost a part of herself in the process, as the Annihilation Mask possessed and corrupted her. However, during the Ten of Swords tournament, she fought against her husband, Apocalypse, who managed to free her from the Golden Helm of Annihilation, taking it for himself. But Apocalypse's will proved strong enough to resist its influence, and the mask was then transformed by Saturnine into a much less influential and corrupting staff, which was then gifted to Genesis. Genesis made her first full appearance in the 2019 X Men series in issue number 12. But we wouldn't learn that she was Annihilation until much later. Who do you think are some of the most important and coolest characters to have recently appeared in the X books? Which X books are your favorites, either currently or from the past? Are there any long lost characters that you would love to see made new and return to us? Let us know in the comments below. This has been Top 10 Nerd, and I'm your host, Amanda McKnight, reminding you, as always, to stay nerdy, YouTube.